So in this video, we'll be looking at the print function in Python. And all that the print function does is it basically takes in an input and prints it out for us to read as an output. So in order to print something, we can first type in the function, and that is print. And then you have your parentheses. And inside it, we can have a output, which we desire. So in this case, I desire the hello world output. Now, <coughs> if we run this program, as you can see, it actually prints out hello world. Now, when you're dealing with the print function, it's good to know that if you're using double quotes, you have to close with a double quote. So you can't do something like this. It will give you an error. In order to solve that, you want to do this. Now, that's the print function. So not only can we have just one input, we can have many input. And to have many inputs, we simply use a comma as a separator. And we can just type in, this is it. So now if I run it, it prints out hello world, followed by a space, which is a comma, and prints this is it. So we aren't restricted to just having one. We can put many in here, and it'll print it all out. Now, the other thing we can do with the print function is, let's say we wanted to add two strings together, or even three. We can do something like this. So our first part of the string plus the second part. And now if I run it, we get a hello plus a second. So the reason it's printing it all out in one word is because we have just said hello plus second. So the plus doesn't get treated as a space or anything. It just performs the operation of conjoining it together. So if we wanted a space, we could either put it in here or in here. Or we can do something like this. Now, when you're dealing with strings, you can mix and match them in this form. So as you can see, I have a string with double quotes. And this string is in single quotes. And if I run it, I get the same thing. Now, the other thing you can do with strings is, let's say you wanted to, uh, to print out a specific set of characters so many times. We can easily do that using this. So we type in our character, and then we just use this uh, symbol, the multiplication symbol. What this does is it prints out the equal sign 23 times. And as you can see, it's printed it out. So if you were to copy this one right here, we would simply just do something like this. So it's 23, 2, 21, 20, 18, 17. And then just do ready, followed by another. Now if you, oh, whoops, I guess that's 16. Right, so as you can see, we've copied this. Now we can even add many things like this. And that basically just prints out many, many, many because we have put it in this string. Now, this thing is treated as one whole thing, so it doesn't strip off any of these spaces or anything like that. Now, the next thing we can do is print out numbers. And we can do either this or we can just do this. Either way, both are the same. Now, for the output, it's the same. But internally, one's a string and one's a number. Now, the thing with this is we can perform addition, subtraction, and all of that. But with this, we can't do that. Now, the other thing with uh, uh, the print function is that we can make our print functions a lot more fancier. So let's say I had something like this is food. I really like it. It's many dollars. Now, let's say we wanted to replace Let's say we wanted to replace this food with something like, I don't know, um, banana or apples, or even chocolate. And we wanted to replace this dollars with actual numbers. Well, we could just do something like banana. We could actually do something like this. Or we could actually make it a lot better by doing something like 
this. Now, if we run this, obviously it gives us exactly what is shown in this print function, but in order to actually make this work, we just type in dot format. Now, what the dot format does is it basically replaces our special text in here. So in this case, we have our curly braces and inside there we have our text and then the same with this. It replaces that with whatever we have typed in here. So now I can do something like food equals chocolate and since I have more than one in here we have to put another one so I can do something like price equals 23. Now if I run it as you can see it prints out this is chocolate I really like it it's so many. Now we can also just change this to like apples make this one and it prints out. Now you just have to be aware that if you have two in here and you have one you print it you get an error saying that you've said you want uh, to print a price but you haven't actually given it in. Now the other thing you can do with the print function is the same method except rather than typing the word out we can do something like this and since we have more than one that now in order to make this work we would have to type in 0 and 1 now the reason we're typing 0 and 1 is because it's looking at it in the order so this is the 0th item and this is the 1th item now the reason it's 0 and 1 and not 1 and 2 is because Python usually does things like this and things like this are lists or they are represented as lists in Python using indexed notation. So indexed basically means I'm going to start the very first item in 0 rather than 1. So we run it and we get the same output. Now in the later videos when we're talking more about lists we'll be going in depth on that. Now the other way we can do this is basically doing it like this and if you run it we have the same thing. Now this means that put it in order so I have apples first and then numbers so if I do something like 23 and apples, then it's going to give me that. Now, we know how to print stuff and it all works, but I think it's good to know what doesn't work. So you can't do something like string plus that. Obviously, that will give you an error. As you can see, it says int blah blah blah. You don't have to worry about what this means. We'll get into that later on. But it's just saying that you can't add a string with a number and the same thing goes with this obviously this doesn't make sense so that's it for this video now in the next video we'll be looking at how we can use some math operators inside the print function and get an output